Good Monday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. A pleasure to connect with you through the I Love Seville Network on a glorious Monday in August. We have a Charlottesville studio location, but our audience is Central Virginia, Commonwealth, country, and worldwide. And today we're presented by Yes Realty Partners. I just love saying that name, and I love <laughs> saying it proudly. Yes Realty Partners, because I know the people, what they stand for, their character, their integrity, and how hard they work for their clients. You know what I also love about this show? My friend Keith Smith. Oh, stop it. And you're about to see him <laughs> on the it. show. Stop it. He's got some coffee in front of him. He's, he's got perspiring. A, he's sweating for those <laughs> no, that are no. only listening on podcasts and <laughs> iTunes and Spotify. He's got a red Sharpie, a green Sharpie, a notes. And I've, awesome. got, a, I've got a dairy market uh, hanky that I'm using to dab my best, whatever the hell it is, sweat. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Pat your sweat on your forehead. I, uh, I don't so, know. I'm just trying to be goofy. Today, uh, it's good to see you, my friend. How was the yeah. weekend? Uh, great. Uh, we had a super busy uh, work weekend, plus we had our little ice cream social on. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it worked out well. Um, I may or may not have had too much ice cream. Okay. <laughs> what ice cream did you get? Uh, so it was, really, it was really cool. He had some great flavors, and it's a super, uh, ex, uh, super great story. It's, uh, uh, and I can't remember the name of the firm, uh, but um, he's out of Richmond. and uh, The ice cream trucks are now ice cream firms. Wow, they're getting uh, man, they're getting big time out there in, in the Lake Monticello. I know, I knew the prices, I knew the prices were escalating at Lake Monticello, but I thought it was still ice cream trucks these days. Uh, uh, I'm just going to wipe my. You, you guys are, you guys live in the swanky life at the Lake. So the guy over came there. from Richmond, first of all. <laughs> okay. Uh, he had we're, an ice cream we're starting social. already. We're not even two minutes in. Yeah, the people are loving it. <laughs> I see them in. responding. They had an ice cream social as a gratitude show of gratitude. Yeah, we we you know. Let me rephrase this. Yona. Yeah. <laughs> Yona. Let me rephrase this. Let me rephrase this. I love you, Yona. Yeah. I love you. Yona does, you know, she is, you know, the beauty and the brains behind it. And I'm not even sure I'm the brawn anymore. No, yes, you are. <laughs> but You're still the brawn. I'm still the brawn. So, uh, and let's not forget your experience. My and ex you're street savvy. And a street savvy and uh, negotiating capabilities. Yeah. You have all. a lot of talents. I have a lot of talents. Um, you certainly got the gift of gab. I got the gift of gab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, God, thank God to my Irish grandmother. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> the yeah, so we we, we invite cl past clients. We we do it a couple of times a, a year and do different things. And we did an ice cream social, and we all uh, set it up in front of my house at Acre Lane, and uh, turned out to, turned into a community thing. A lot of people around the community came in, and and uh, we we fed a lot of people ice cream. And I, I may or may not have had four cups. But of ice cream, because I'm an ice cream, anything, you know. Oh, love Yo ice cream. Yona said, uh, so what kind of ice cream should I get? I said ice cream. Yeah. It's, I mean, what flavor? I said ice cream. We love ice cream. So they had a blue, he had a blueberry um, <clears throat> uh, ice cream. It actually wasn't an ice cream. It was, it was more of a, a gelato okay. than an ice cream. It was out of this world. It was really good. I love gelatos. But we love found them cream. at, uh, we went to the... Um, uh, a nationalization ceremony on the 4th of July, which John and I do every year, and he was serving ice cream, and he was just a super cool guy, and we grabbed the car and said, hey, can you do this? And he said, yes. So that's what they're all about. They work hard. They play hard. They had a uh, social at their, at their home to thank their friends, their family, all their clients for their support. And I'll tell you, school's about to start, Keith Smith. This week, I think <clears throat> everyone's pretty much rocking and rolling in some kind of uh, school and we have some expectations that we may see uh, potentially little market adjustments because of the uh, normalcy that's back with people's lives. Yeah, yes, and uh, maybe, maybe yes, maybe, maybe no, no yes, maybe, maybe no yes on it. But Flavana has been back for a while. Yeah. Um, did I, Charles was going back this week? Mm -hmm. Is it this week? Yeah. Yep. Uh, on that end of it, so that, there may be some some adjustments. I made a little bit of a post uh, yesterday. And we'll oh, take, I saw it. We'll take a little bit of a deeper dive into it now. I, I just took a look at um, what happened. I know I do this every seven days, right? And so I look at the seven day snapshot. So I looked at the last seven days from eight fourteen to eight twenty one, and I went back sixty days because I save these on my trusty iPhone. And I like I, that you do that. And it took me a while to figure out that they actually date and timestamp the pictures. So you don't have to market it yourself. I don't have to. 
I don't have to put the numbers in them. Right? Well, you so figured it out. I was putting the numbers in them for me to remember what date I did it. But our uh, 29-year-old daughter out in Seattle goes, you realize the date and time is right there. But it's interesting. So uh, uh, two months ago, the same week, uh, we had 101 new homes come on the market. And this last week, we only had 80. So we're, we're about... We're actually going the wrong way, right? Two months ago, we were actually more inventory. Again, it's a huge, it's a, you know, it's the car footprint that we do, what we do on that. Um, but it was very interesting. The pendings yeah. were almost spot on, right? There were a couple, couple of uh, four units off. Uh, two months ago, pendings were 86. Last uh, seven days, it was 90. Uh, a couple other interesting things. Um, so the souls, are, these are the ones that have actually closed. Yep. So last seven days was 110. A month ago was 106. Okay. So we're kind of holding pending the same. We're actually closing a little bit more. And I didn't expect to see that, to be honest with you. Uh, actives are down. Excuse me? Actives are down. Uh, actives are down. Actives are down pretty darn close to 20. 19 is down on that. But, you know, I felt that the solds wouldn't be that far off um, only because... You know, interest rates, right? Everybody was talking interest rates. So it's something we've been talking about for some time. I don't really, it's, it's not really impacting the market in a week over week look on it. Now, what you brought with you was current active data um, for the car footprint. No, 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 that's Charlotte. That's Charlottesville City. I'm sorry, we did not have a, an adequate pre production meeting. Charlottesville City, okay. So I wanted to take a little dive in. There's a lot. There's a lot. Did you see some of those red circles on the DOMs? Yeah. Yeah. So you want me to highlight them? Well, actually, before we do that, um, what I did is I did sold in the city of Charlottesville. Okay. Right? Uh, no new construction. There really isn't a lot, but I take that out anyway. And only single-family detached homes. So these are not townhomes and condos and stuff like that. So the last 60 days on that, 84 units have sold. Um, five were five days DOM median, and the median sales price was 467. That's not cheap. Same 60 days last year. Very interesting, at least to me it was. 90 sold. So we're a little bit lower, okay. not a lot. Yeah. Um, day, days on market was actually a day higher. Okay. It's the same 60 days last year, 2021. Um, the sa median sales price was four eighteen, so we're roughly fifty grand plus Did or minus. Did you hear that? Good so, lord! So, so we have. If you would have bought a house sixty days ago last year and and sold it now, you're roughly about ten percent on on the upside. I think you're going to see. So year over year, median has gone up ten percent in the city of Charlottesville. Ten percent year over year. That 60 day block. That right? 60 day block. That 60 day block. So, that, that, you know, the 60 days back from yesterday, actually, when I did it, uh, versus the same time last year. And, and, and it was interesting because what you have in front of you is the actives, same thing, single family detached, no new construction. And we're at, we're at 43 homes. And there's actually several, like under 300,000. But if you take a look at those DOMs, yeah. Um, there's 70s, there's 60s, there's 40s, there's 26. And at some point in the show, I kind of want to dive into each one of them and talk about, okay, why are they on the market? That's a great idea. Um, uh, on that end of it. Uh, so I'm a, little, I'm a little wondering what 60 days from now, I think the DOMs are going to be a little bit higher than five Yeah. on that end of it. So what I wanted to do... And maybe I'm talking too much. No, dude, you're killing it. What Bring I it. want, what I wanted to do was, you know, 2012, when we were smack in the middle of time of the time of great unpleasantness. Yeah. And I wanted to see what the DOMs were for that same two months. Okay. Look at you. The, yeah, I, I told you I was going to work mm -hmm, yesterday on this, mm -hmm. um, uh, on it. Um, 26 homes sold, same 60 days, 10 years ago. Two. From 6 21 12 2012 to 8 21 2012. That was yet, as of yesterday. 26 sold. So 26 versus 84. 
I didn't do the math. Whoever's smart enough can figure that out. I'll figure it out real quick. Um, you got that? DOMs. You want to take a gander what the DOMs were? 84 minus 26 first. Got my uh, 58. Got it. So the DOMs. Delta were, of 50 unsold 10 years ago. DOMs were 60 days. Okay. And the DOMs now, again? Five. Five. So you're 12 times the DOM. And so the reason I was thinking this and going through this and maybe a great way to kick the show off is, you know, some folks keep on saying, are we going back to the time of great unpleasantness, right? And, and none of the data is showing that, right? You know, maybe 60 days from now, things might change a little bit. Um, some folks, I prefer to use days on market as a barometer of where we're going only because it's, it's easy to, to grab off of, off of uh, Paragon. Also, you don't have to do a lot of ma math for absorption, right? But 60 days in our marketplace is about where that switch happens, right? Where that switch happens from the seller's market to the buyer's market. So we're like, what'd you say, 12 times? Yeah. We've got a bunch of, I mean, it, we've got a long time to go from five to 60. Well, let's say hi to some of the viewers and listeners. Dino is watching. Hey, Dino. At Dairy Market. Good to see you. Good to see you there on, on Facebook the other day. Yep. I wandered in there, actually wandered in there over the weekend uh, to have a quick meeting. Didn't see you uh, because otherwise you would have tackled me and said hello to me. <laughs> He's watching at Dairy Market. We love you, Dino. Jerry Brown, welcome to the program. Bill McChenzie, welcome to the program. Guys, questions and comments, jump in. I will relay them live on air. Catherine Lochner, hello and welcome to the show. Um, thank you for tagging me in that post, Catherine. We should get you on one of these talk shows soon to talk teaching. Um, the conversation continuously comes up on this show that housing is heading for a 2008, 2009, 2010 repeat. Yeah. We have continuously said on the show, we do not think that's going to happen. He's now backed it up with data from 10 years ago. We've also highlighted the fact that the homes have massive equity positions now, and the regulatory nature of getting a loan is much more difficult. It's much more stringent to get a loan now than it was in 2008. The median sales price, by the way, 10 years ago was 252. Did you hear that? So City of Charlottesville, 2012. Detached, no new construction. Single family detached. Median sales price was what? 252. And it's 467 now. 467500 to be exact, but I kind of rounded it down. I mean, that's substantial. It's 215 k if I did my math right. I mean, that is a substantial increase in 10 years. Yeah, that's, that's a substantial increase. So it, it, it's, it's going to keep on, keep on going, but, you know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I really wanted to, when I started pulling the actives in Charlottesville, as it stands right now, yeah. and I started seeing a lot of 66... 54, 67, 73 days on market. The, the median, the median in, the, in Charlottesville right now, this is actives only, the median uh, days on market for, um, for actives is 41, right? Uh, so that it, it, not to confuse folks, but there is a different DOM for active versus sold. But right now, the median uh, average for everything that's on the market right now, which is 43, you're roughly at 41 days. And then what will happen is, is units sell, it'll start, the math will start changing. So you're still Talk convinced, about. still convinced it's a seller's market? I, I am, but, but I, I really wanted to take, and I didn't have time to do that yesterday, I wanted to take a look at some of these 70s and some of these 60s, literally look at them, um, you know, without giving away too much information, so I don't cross any lines. Sure, I yeah. Get, get, uh, Get the MLS copy. So which one do you want to start with? Well, I have, I, I've been talking. I haven't had a chance to, to, to upload them here in a second. Um, but, you know, look, the, the, reality, the reality of it is we've been talking about it on the show for, for forever. And while I do this, I'm going to say, you know what are five things on the market, right? Location, price, features, conditions, and timing. You burnt that into my head. I Absolutely. burnt that into your head. So, um, you know... <clears throat> Hang on one second here. Catherine, we're talking, um, we're talking 2022 housing versus 2012 housing. We're taking a 10-year look. Um, 2012 was a time in housing in Charlottesville where, where it was very difficult. We were very much in the middle of a housing recession. And we're comparing data points of 2012 to data points here in 2022. 2022. Why we're doing that is we're, we're trying to highlight that 
housing is is in a good position locally. It's um, backed by strong equity positions in people's homes, and folks aren't just getting loans willy nilly um, like they were 10 years ago, 12 years ago. We're also highlighting that um, homeowners are much more <coughs> cautious of using home equity line of credits, HELOCs. They're not just using homes as piggy banks like they did 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And that's kept equity in people's houses. Now, Scott Morris, friend of the program, joins us on Wednesdays here on Real Talk, did say this, credit card balances are escalating very quickly for American households. And as Americans, Virginians, Charlottesvillians, Central Virginians are using credit cards to pay their bills, there is some concern with those in finance that homeowners will utilize the equity positions they have to help keep credit card balances in check. Follow that track. <clears throat> Keith, jump in here. We got comments coming in Fast and Furious. Yeah, so I, you know, I just wanted to pull, uh, and, and I'll, I'll leave addresses out so much and, and, and owners and, and realtors so I don't cross any, any lines, but there's a home in Charlottesville that's at 259. It's been on the market for 75 days. Right, and and so when you take a look at it closely, and you take a look at the pictures, I physically haven't been in it. Again, going back to these five location, price, features, conditions, uh, and timing on that end of it, um, I, I I think in reality the home is just a little bit overpriced based on what has to be done in it. So I think what's happening here is you're starting to see the sellers. Um, adjusting the, the the prices, so I can tell you in this one it started at 269. Now it's down to 259, right? So I, I suspect they've got a little ways to go to hit the market. But what I what I don't want folks to think because they went in the market too high, in my opinion, on that end of it, the market is going down, right? So as you see those go down, these listings go down, they just were overpriced to start with. And what they're doing is settling back to the market. We just proved uh, year over year was a 10% gain between 2021 and 2022. So instead of, you know, if you buy today, you might, you know, it'll be probably sub 10%. You're probably somewhere between 6 to 8% year over year kind of gain on it. But, yeah. So we'll speak to that. So Kevin Yancey, we love when you watch the program. This is also coming in from Jennifer, and Stephen is making a reference of this comment as well. Three people on um, one of, we have 15 Facebook pages this show is broadcasting on, 15 Twitter accounts, I YouTube, see. iTunes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, LinkedIn, Instagram. I mean, it's, it's, it's everywhere here. And my personal favorite, which is Periscope. Periscope. It's on Periscope. Twitter is exactly right. So there's, this topic is coming in in various forms across the entire network. And it's the appreciation can't continue like this or Charlottesville City will only be a home for millionaires. This comment is also coming in. How much does Keith think the appreciation will continue to go up? And the other comment in this family of appreciation comments is, if the appreciation does continue like this, what does Keith think will happen to Charlottesville? So three different variations, all with appreciation as the granular topic. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's interesting. So the, the median, like we said, the median sales price in the last, this is closed, was 467. When you start taking a look at what's available at that kind of range, you know, in that, upper threes and lower fours, there's very few homes. There's maybe four or five. And it's interesting, those all have are kind of in single digit DOMs and I suspect they'll go on the contract pretty quickly. Right. When you start looking at the lower priced homes and you start digging into them, they need a ton of work. The DOMs, the high DOMs on actives in Charlottesville City are lower priced homes. And then on the upper end, you got you've got some you've got a couple of them that are in the 174 and 117. So normally the question would be, okay, what's wrong with them, right? So I, I have not dug into those individual uh, listings at, at this point, but definitely at the entry level because I think that's what the viewers and listeners are asking about. So the problem is, is if I'm going to buy this home for 259 on it and I've got to put money into it, do I have the capital to do that, right? Do I have the money to do, money to do that? 
uh, on and then and if I do, am I overpricing myself for the market? How many price reductions are you seeing? So in that's inter market? so that so that's interesting. Uh, thank you for asking that. I actually looked that up. Um, so sa same week, two months ago. Yep. That's there were seventy seven price changes. Same this week. Is, this is car footprint. This is not Charlottesville. Now. Okay. This is car footprint, right? Um, this last seven days, 47. So, so what's happening here is the market, from a pricing perspective, is starting to settle out a little bit, right? You know, the, the sellers are realizing uh, this isn't a piggy bank, right? Um, and they're listening to their trusted advisors. They're listening to their real estate agents, their re real estate professionals. They're listening to folks like um, uh, Scott Morris, and everybody in our in our partner file that we have and our partners for the show on that, um, and so that that's a positive positive sign. Another interesting stat: to 60 days to now, we had 18 homes back on market. We have not been talking about that a lot, lot, lot. So that means <clears throat> these were homes that um, contract fell through, went back on the market. There was only 18 in the last seven days. Two months ago, it was 25. So two months ago, there was a lot of back on markets. You know, there was a lot of price changes. 60 days, everybody was trying to figure the market out. The time has created a more realistic seller. So that's the fifth one, right? Time. That's the reason I, you know, most people only talk about four. I always add the fifth one because time matters. Time matters. And uh, so anyway, it's interesting. So I, I don't know if I covered all three. Oh, you did. You did. Woody Fincham. Let's give him props. Woody. Woody. Uh, I, I've actually was supposed to call him this weekend. I apologize, Woody. He's got a uh, crystal ball prediction. Ooh, I like crystal ball predictions. Ooh, should, should we get him out? He, you can pull it out if you like. I'll <laughs> read the comment. He says, I'll pull out the crystal ball. Unless we have a major economic issue, I'm thinking we're going to end up back in the 3 to 5% appreciation mm -hmm. range year over, re year over year for Charlottesville in the area immediately around the city. And we're probably looking at a 45 to 90 day normal days on market for regular things. It's, yes. So, Woody, um, in your world, do you see what, what is the DOM, what's the magic DOM change that it really goes from a buyer's market to a seller's or vice versa. Woody so. Fincham is an, uh, an appraiser. That's right. One of our um, wonderful sponsors. For those watching the program, he also adds this. So then, Woody, see if you can give us that, uh, that, que that answer to Keith's question there. He says, happy Monday. I've noticed of the last four or five, in the last four or five years, we have gone in and appraised the same residential property three or four times, times yeah. um, over the last, uh, let's see, in, in in each of these situations, in each of these situations, the homeowners were using the equity in their home to buy toys, recreation oh. vehicles, Corvettes, yeah. boats. It was a little concerning, yeah. but I will say that it is as much lower rate than what we saw back in 2005. Well, it was everybody back. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, it was almost way, everybody. It was yeah. way easier, and people hadn't gotten truly burnt yet then. Um, he says, you know, I think, I think they had visors on, right, and, and tunnel vision, and, and this is not going to happen to me. And it was everywhere. It was getting marketed to you. Now, I will say this, um, and I'll get to the other comments coming in here. Vanessa Parkhill, hello. Welcome to the program. I will say this. The marketing campaigns and the advertising campaigns that are out there for people utilizing the equity in their homes is picked up significantly. I have to tell you... Um, they're everywhere. So, so that's my concern. And this is really a conversation we've got to stay safe for Scott on Wednesday when he comes on and visits us. But that's my biggest concern. If, if the regulatory um, requirements loosen up a little bit. And they are loosening. They are, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 I've been doing this for three and a half decades, and that's what happens. And this pendulum, pendulum just goes pegs to the other way on that on that end on that end of it. I I, I think I may be wrong, and this may be a little Pollyannic. Did I say that right? I think did you I did. Pollyannic, Pollyannic. Okay. Um, on on that on, from my perspective, but I think there's enough institutional memory from the time of great unpleasantness for folks to kind of whoa whoa and we're doing it here on the show right oh, we're well, waving I mean, we're the red trying to. we're waving the the flag not yeah. the red flag but we're we're pulling out the yellow card anyway 
uh, and saying, you know, look, this is not a good, this is not a good, this is not a good thing. So I think the market's trying to balance itself, and I think I know it is trying to balance itself out. Um, but you know, not to make it about yes, realty partners, but we're 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 doing great. Our phones are ringing, emails are coming in. On that end of it, you know, people are people are starting to say, okay, I want to sell, I want to buy now. Where maybe 60, 90 days ago, everybody was like, whoa, 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 whoa. So, you know, I, I think it, I think we're going in the right direction. Woody Fincham, I got a question for you and one for Keith Smith. What is the top of the market, the million plus, going to do as this market shifts? What is the top of the market, the million plus, going to do as this market shifts? Um, that may not be in the city of Charlottesville or the urban ring. I got that question for you. <clears throat> and we got a lot of comments coming in. Woody's got an answer for you. Oh, wow, well, the comments are coming here fast and furious. He says, um, first answer that question and then I'll get to Woody's answer for me. So what you're asking me is what's the top end of the market looking like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did not dig into that over the weekend. I, I, I could try to do this, but as we've discussed on Friday, my ADD. Yeah, I'll just, you know, back of the napkin, back, from so your back, experience. Yeah, so back of the napkin, so I'm just, you know, just taking a look at what I've got in front of me from uh, Charlottesville that has sold, just a, just a quick look at it um, in the last 60 days, you know, let's call something over, what are we saying, over a million? Yeah. Okay. So, what, what, yeah. 800? That's fine. Okay, yeah. so there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight homes in the last 60 days at Charlottesville that sold over over 800 literally the same amount a year ago see that's the part that's the little sector the little um, piece of the market I'm a little worried about but I got to tell you um, there was one two three four four in the 800 range the rest in the upper nines are only two over one million and in the last 60 days there was only one eight hundred, one nine hundred, and everything was million and two of them that were over two million. And then the reason I bring that up is you see certain neighborhoods where inventory moves regardless of conditions. Your Ednams, your Ednam Forces, your Bel Airs. Inventory in those say three neighborhoods. We're talking three Ivy neighborhoods here. So just real quickly, those eight Last 60 days between 800 and 2.4 million dollars. Not one of them was over seven days on the market. So you're saying they're moving? They're moving. Okay. Well, why aren't they moving in Albemarle? Uh, I didn't pull Alb Albemarle's numbers on that on that end of it uh, uh, yet. But I'm just taking a look at what I pulled for Charlottesville. I could try to do it here. So you're not? Yeah. You don't think softening in that? Uh... I'm just telling you what I, I'm just telling you what I'm looking at for Charlottesville. It's not. It's not. It's not softening. I can tell you a year ago. Um, a year ago, we had a couple in 47 days on market, but it was the same. That was an outlier. Most of them were under seven days on market. So it's it's kind of not softening. The volume isn't there, though, right? At least in the city of Charlottesville. Okay, okay. Um, I highlighted um, three neighborhoods, Ednam, Ednam Forest, and Bel Air, all in that Ivy corridor, all with active listings. And traditionally, those three, now these are million plus listings, but traditionally those three, those listings don't stay on the market for long. Um, that's why I brought it up. Woody brings this question to you, this answer to your question. Traditionally in his business, somewhere in the 90 to 120 day on range, day on market, but who knows what the new normal will really look like. Market analysis is always very clear when you're looking at it retrospectively, oh, not sure. so much when you're in the mid middle of it. Sure. That's definitely true. But that's, uh, but that's that's anything. But that's what we do for a living, right? That's what Woody does for a living, right? This is what this is our our trusted advisor thing we've always talked about, right? With everybody that's one of our partners uh, uh, with, with Real Talk with Keith Smith. That's what we do for a living. We look at this stuff and we help guide our clients through it. So I just took a quick look at Ednam. Yeah. While you're, while you're, while you were. There's one on the market. The one next to the your old stomping grounds there. Yep. You know where that is, right? I do. I mean, that's right next to the. Um, what's the, What's the name of that White House? The White House. The, that big oh, mansion. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's got a name. It does. Yeah. Ednam Hall. Yeah. Right next to Ednam. It's literally next to Ednam Hall. 
So it's interesting. The reason uh, I bring this up is this is a single family detached home next to Ednam Hall, across from Farmington, literally a, a driver away from Foods so, of All Nations, a three wood. Yeah. And it's been it's been on there. Yeah. So I haven't looked at that right now, but I just did I did a quick look at what what is active pending and sold in the last twelve months. Yeah. And it, and there's literally um, one one active. Uh, in Endem. And one sold. So what generally happens out, Endem's really not a great choice of a subdivision because what happens, they very rarely turn over. Well, and, and when they do turn over, they turn over immediately and or they don't even hit the market when they okay. turn over. Yes. Yeah, so the one in, the one that's on the market that I'm looking at right now in Endem, Endem Forest, that's $1.7 million. Uh, excuse me, Ednam. That's an Ednam. Yeah, I yeah. apologize. Ednam Force behind it. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, it's... Yeah, I don't. I don't see that as a, a long on the tooth as far as days on market for that price point. But my the point I'm making is to do a comp against that in there. Very difficult. In the last twelve, in the last twelve months, only one unit sold. Well, and very difficult to do a comp um, because much of Ednam is attached inventory. A lot, of, this is, a lot of it. This is single it. family detached. That's, that's exactly right. So it's hard to find a comp here. That's exactly So the right. comp for this particular listing in Ednam may end up being across the street or Bel Air or Ednam Forest, more single family detached communities. Yeah. So I just added, I just added attached into that um, criteria real quickly, and it only jumped it by one. And you talk, <clears throat> you talk the neighborhood next door, Bel Air's got two on the market. Yeah, so these so these market this Bel Air Ednam uh, Ednam Forest Ednam Forest um, um, the golf course Farmington. Thank you, Farmington. Yeah. Uh, they just don't turn over. They just they don't. Um, so you know, I'm looking into the history on the one that's that's on the market that that hasn't turned over in years. You're talking the Ednam one. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I, so so that's kind of what's happening with that. I think the real, the real thing, and, and I'm trying to work on a show to bring um, one of the executives from Stanley Martin, and then another like a custom build like Christopher Bremmett. Oh, that'd be a great show. On that, I'd really want to know how the million dollar plus new construction market's doing. I don't. We don't really see that in Paragon because a lot of those custom home transactions never hit the MLS. So we, we don't know what, what they are. Kevin says this. We got Philip Dow with, hey Kevin, from Scottsville doing? with comments. Kevin from Waynesboro with comments. Um, we'll, we'll get to as many of these comments as possible. Kevin says this. All three of the neighborhoods you mentioned um, were custom subdivisions. That's and exactly everyone right. knows that those homes, when they were built, were quality houses built by good um, builders. Um, so deferred maintenance is, is not an issue. So, so Kevin's spot on. The second part of it, and thank you for jogging my <clears throat> my little noodle here, Kevin. <clears throat> the fact that they're custom, some of the long of the tooth on the market. Generally, these homes get, and I know I I did a lot of them myself, not in those subdivisions, but <clears throat> in other areas. When when you start over customizing a house, yeah, you don't get the value back. A, you don't get the value back. B, shrink your buyer pool. Your buyer pool is, you know, the answer is okay, Jerry. We need to find another Jerry, and yeah. God knows that doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, it's not another Jerry. That's for sure, right, Judah? <laughs> Even though people, uh, yeah, he's he's very. There's not much another right. Jerry. There's not another Keith either. There's so. no other Keith. There's no other Judah. There's no other Eliza. And some would say, thank, um, thank goodness for that. I know my kids would. Um, so what do you make? What do you address the point of the uh, custom neighborhoods? Yeah, and, and he, probably not a ton of deferred maintenance there. He's hundred percent right. That's a good point. And and it's why, you know, in Ednam, and that's what I have in front of me, you know, attached and detached in the last twelve months, only two homes sold. And it's because they 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 just don't turn over a lot. Well, for, here's a follow up question from Jennifer. Keith mentions neighborhoods that don't turn over. Which ones would he say are the ones that turn over the least? Great question. <clears throat> turn over the least. I think we're talking about them. Yeah, I think we are. I think we're talking about them. You know, they're, they're you know, these particular neighborhoods, they just, they don't, you know, Bel Air's one, right? <clears throat> like Bel Air is across from the uh, Bel Air gas station. Yep. Um, fantastic location right next to 250. Um, hop, skip, and a jump from Foods of All Nations and the Boar's Head. I mean, you can get to downtown in less than 10 minutes 
um, less than 10 minutes. Uh, jump in here, Keith Smith. So Bel Air, <clears throat> last 12 months, uh, active, active uh, and sold is literally no pending. So there's two actives there. There's two actives know. in Bel Air. Yeah. These, these neighborhoods sell like hotcakes. Yeah. So, and they're, and we're looking at, we're looking at f the s ones that are sold four days on market, 10 days on market, five days on market, 22 days on market, you know, and these are 2.9, 1.9, 1.2, 1.1, .1. the cheapest uh, in the last 12 months that are sold is 650, which is pretty interesting. That, I, I know that one. It needed a lot of work, and that's putting it nicely. Oh, yeah. Putting it very nicely. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but if so, now it, it becomes a different math problem there. Well, that one, the 650 that you mentioned, was in a lot of ways a total rebuild. Um, so someone's buying it for buying essentially the dirt um, for that particular one. The one that's nine, not just under a million, 999,000 on Old Farm Road is an owner um, agent that has it on the market. And then there's another one that's on a large piece of, piece of dirt that's one four. Yeah. Um, Paul McCarter watching the program, hey, he Paul. says, custom is not always the best, um, and what was custom 20, 20 to 30 years ago looks dated today. So, if, uh, you know, it's, Paul, thank you so much. Um, we actually uh, did some listing presentations on some custom homes I built 20 years ago. Um, and, you know, they've reached a certain point in their life, they're, they're moving on. Uh, and literally, when I built them 20 years ago, I said, guys, you, you you know, you, you know, you've got to uh, not over-customize it. And uh, the answer usually was, uh, I don't care, this is my last house. And uh, it's never the, your last house, right? There's always some, well. Well, this is a good question for you. And, and they're pretty customized, and we're gonna, it's going to be tough to sell. There's, these neighborhoods are selling regardless of the updated nature of the houses. There are other neighborhoods in Central Virginia that do not have this kind of resilience. Sure. But the ones that we're talking about, the inventory sells regardless yeah, of the condition. But that's been like that forever. And as as well, I guess I want to highlight: there's not few like, there's not many like that. No, no. I, I, I you know, we've, I think we've um, <clears throat> very quickly came to the top of the list. You know, you can't even put Old Trail in that list, right? You know, there's, there's really not that many subdivisions like that and you're not going to see a lot of them anymore right you're probably you're never going to see any more like and like a bel air like an Ednam, because you can't develop because you can't develop there you, you you you're, the development code of development right now would not allow it no well our people and people are essentially buying a school district in a lot of ways there uh, you know we've sold quite a few in there because um, that's 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 it, murray that's merriweather yeah. that's henley so so the ones that we've sold, we've never sold a home over there to a young family. Well, because of the price point. It, it, it was 90, literally, not a lot of them, about a half a dozen of them over the years um, in that <clears throat> they're all folks coming back to UVA, retired, coming back to UVA. Um, Woody, the top of the market usually is the most, um, is mostly unaffected. There are still many conventional and government loan programs out there that are doing jumbo loans, so there's still a, a good amount of capital available to purchase, but when you get into the luxury market, most of those folks can write a check for it, so it's not necessarily affected by purchasing power due to the increase in interest rates. We do a lot of luxury level <coughs> property, and I've not really seen any great effect to this point. So it's interesting, the one that's active for 195 actually started off at 13. It actually went up. And uh, the the, but this has been on the market for quite a while, 114 days. Look, the, 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 the buyer who can buy a $2 million house can just bring more cash to the table and adjust them the payment. The buyer at the 230 mark for Charlottesville can't, typically can't, no. right? And they can't spend the money to renovate it. They can't buy the, the one that sold for six what was it, 650 over in Bel Air, and say, well, hey. I'll put another million into it. You know, hey, Keith, yeah. hey, Keith can you send over a dozer and crunch this house and, you know, I want to build a new one? Right. That, that's not going to happen at that price point. Well said, well said. Are, do Ashcroft and Keswick fit that model? 
Keswick Estates in Ashcroft. Yeah, the model you're talking that's about. That's actually a great. I love. I love this show, man. This I just, just got put on the feed. The people are so much smarter than me. Uh, let's see, Keswick Keswick Estates, though, right? That yeah, be... Keswick Estates. Yeah. Um, I know that that market fairly well. There, there's three um, there's, active in Keswick Estates. So nine in the last twelve months. Let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, the last twelve months of suit we got here on this. How's the, the entry point at Keswick Estates right now is two million four hundred twenty-five thousand. That's exactly right. And the two million four hundred twenty-five thousand dollar listing in Keswick Estates is three thousand seven hundred fifty square feet. So there's one pending for two five. Yep, yep. And uh, then there's mm -hmm. um, there's the the one on Palmer Drive that's two million six seventy five is brand new. Yeah, it's never been lived in. It's completely brand new. Look at the days on market. Well, that's because that it was built. They listed it when they were building it. Well, the look, one that's 805? The, the 2884 Palmer Drive, 2675? Uh, not 75. I got 28. 2884. Yeah, 28. Palmer Drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, that house was finished last year. <clears throat> Yeah, so so what they did is the reason is eight oh five and and I new construction I would discount. You're saying eight oh five DOM. DOM. Is what you're saying. Sorry okay. about that. I misunderstood you. Okay. Sorry, no, no, I, I probably didn't say it. But it's eight oh five DOM. I discount that on new construction right away because I I could just look at that and oh, know, it's brand new and know that that's been a long. Okay, so build. there you go. That's good knowledge in there. You're saying that eight oh five days on market is not accurate because it was put on market while they were doing the construction that's to entice exactly, buyers to come. That's exactly right. Why is something like that not moving? Uh, two million six hundred. Well, I understand the price, <laughs> but I mean the price is moving elsewhere. To I, I I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I need to actually kind of dig into it. My suspicion is, uh, my suspicion is that the price point, and maybe they customized it too much. Who knows? I, I have not been in it to to talk about. You know. So the, would you say Ashcroft and Keswick Estates fit that Bel Air, Endum Endum Forest model yeah. of the inventory is going to move regardless? Yeah, Ash, Ashcroft is a little different. It's a Paul Buyer. It's a. Uh, RL, RL buyer. RL buyer development. Yeah. yeah. You know, it the house is gorgeous. I'm looking through the pictures on the Keswick Estates right now as as I'm talking to oh you. Oh my gosh. So, 2884 Palmer is gorgeous too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't have an answer to that. We, it is gorgeous. Yeah. And it's on some dirt. Four acres plus. Yeah. Four acres plus. Yeah. So Four point one five. You see the associ association dues? Well, the dues ain't cheap, and that's yeah. part of the estates, but they cover everything in there for you. Yeah, the dues are, what's the exact dues number a month? Is no, it five? Well, it's a year. They got it in a year. It's, it's actually really not to be bad. 3,271. 3,271 a year? Yeah, divide. Yeah. You're talking uh, 272 gonna, a month. I literally was going to say divide that by 12, and then I realized, how stupid is Two, that? Come on. <laughs> That's not stupid. We're, we're doing a live show. A oh, lot of, that's right. A lot of live. people don't realize this. This is unscripted. We are literally just sitting here it's having a talk show. It's funny. Um, you should say that. When I was out west doing my talking in Seattle and Portland, this show came up and yada, 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 and, and all this stuff. And um, they were talking to me about, uh, well, I watch this podcast, listen to this podcast and that and this, and yours is a little different. And, and I said, yeah, because those podcasts are edited, right? This is live. Yeah, this is raw and unfiltered. It's, it's live, live, and it just gets put on the website, yeah. and it is what it is. Right. This, at, at this. And that's what people want. Yeah. I, I, they don't want it filtered and screened, and, yeah. and they want it to be the dirty, dirty. I got to tell you, I had a ton of fun on Friday. Oh, this show's awesome. I'm having a ton of fun right yeah. now. I mean, people are literally pitching us neighborhoods and yeah. asking us to give you, you to give us their take well, on it. It's on, awesome. On, on Friday, it was like, let's just do Batman and Robin and have fun. Today, actually, we did some. I did some research. Yeah, and you're there. killing it. Yeah, oh, thank you. And you're killing it. So more neighborhoods are being pitched to you here. Oh. Eddie, do you want to follow up on the estates, Keswick Estates? Yeah. I, you need yeah. to give us a take on the neighborhood. <laughs> Historically, oh, you, you got a it? you got a brand new Keswick Hall. Yeah, completely remodeled. It, it started off a little rocky. It started off rocky, a lot rocky. Uh, there was understatement. A, there was a whole kind of lawsuit stuff going on with Laura Ashley and and you. He's you, talking the resort here, the was, club. Isn't this the same the hotel? Yeah, it, it's the same yeah. part of it on that end of it. And it was, it, you know, it, it's funny um, subdivisions. Let me see if I can do this a little better. Um, you know, you ever wonder why there's a spot that a store never makes it? A yeah. restaurant doesn't make it. Yeah. Food is great and all that stuff. And eventually... Like, for example, that location on Water Street where the Jewish jelly was. Oh, got it. Now, there's, there's been so many iterations what, what, in that what's spot. What's in there now? 
Oh, it's like a uh, meat what's, on a stick. I think it's like a. What's in there where the old where the Jewish deli was on Water Street in your place? Somebody help us out. I mean, how many restaurants have been in that spot? Check check the uh, check the. Oh, the, you're the talking interwebs. about actually in the York Place. The yeah, where the Jewish deli was. The, you know? There was two locations. It was there, and there was another one on the corner. No. Okay. That, that was on the corner of uh, Water and Second. Water and Second. Okay, though that's the one I'm talking about on the corner of Water and Second. That location has been so many iterations of restaurants. Exactly. Right. Another example is where Tonic is right now on Market Street, oh, and yeah. I love Tonic. It's and great. I hope they're there forever. But there's been a boatload of restaurants at that location. So why? So so you're, this is your world, right? So yeah. why why do you, why do you think neither one of those and that and then sometimes something comes in there and that's it, right? I, I, and that's what happens with subdivisions. For some reason, they they don't get rolling. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then all of a sudden, a new builder comes in there, a new developer comes in there, or something like that, and it just goes from that. You know, there's a subdivision on 250 that has some horses. It used to have horses in it uh, that's, that did not do well for a long time. And then all of a sudden, now it is. So, interesting question for you. This is a really... I didn't want to name it. I mean, you can name it. Why don't I you can, name it? Okay, Glenmore. Glenmore. Yeah. yeah. Glenmore totally set dormant. Yeah. Forever. Forever. And then COVID made it take off. COVID Like made a it rocket take, ship. Like a rocket ship. Um, which is very true, what he just said. So this is a great comment. Are you ready for this one? Yes, sir. I'll take a sip. This is from Spencer. Nice shirt, by the way. Thank you very much. Spencer says, are subdivisions more protected or insulated than homes that are not within a community? Oh, wow. What a great question. That's a great question. That's a talk show right there. The subdivision versus the standalone home, the pros and cons, and the upside and downside. That's a great topic. I'm actually thinking. That's a scary thing. Right? That's a rare thing. Okay, I'll throw some, I'll throw some things out there while you think. Okay? The subdivision is going to offer community amenities where the standalone home will not have the neighborhood amenities that a subdivision has. Some of those neighborhood amenities could be walking paths, golf courses, pools, tennis courts, workout facilities, hiking trails. Those amenities were crucial during COVID as we were living outside more than ever. And prior to COVID, golf courses were like, forget about it. Prior to COVID, golf courses were in the crapper. Now. Since COVID, they've had an uptick in popularity. I took a bike ride on Sunday around, the, I did a, a couple laps around the there lake. There were a ton of people playing. My God, it was packed. Right. People are, are out there playing. A, 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 a two years ago, that would not have been the case. So we should highlight the subdivisions, the amenities. That yeah, has value now. It, it has value, but, but let's do a little yin and yang here. Please, please. Um, so, so the downside to that is... so HOA payments. And HOA payments. And so people understand, every HOA in the world, okay, in the Virginia world is probably too much too much of a, of a stab there uh there's you know there's things called special assessments right right and you know depending on which subdivision you're in and so forth and so on and how the bylaws are set up and the governance and restrictions but you can hit a special assessment on on that you know and you know i, I don't know if there was any improvements at, at glenmore but i could talk about lake monticello please go ahead yeah they they there was like a four million dollar uh, f uh, fund or a special assessment to go ahead and increase the, uh, improve the pool house and the club, which always these things needed to be done. And it's awesome. They don't talk about it enough, which is frustrating to me who pays the dues over there. But, but we got a special assessment. So you could, that could happen. I think the question... We had a special assessment based on um, keeping land undeveloped. Sure. They went association bought, purchased the land lands, yeah. to keep new density from happening. Sure. And the uh, the association purchasing the land raised everyone's payments. Sure. So so there's that's kind of the the opposite side of it. But I think who was the, the person that Spencer? That's so a Sp great question. Yeah. So Spencer, I think where Spencer was driving at is when the time of great unpleasant pleasantness happened. Did homes out in the county, for instance, with well and septic. Uh, on it fare better than homes that were in subdivisions. That's what he's getting at. Yeah, yeah. And also in periods like this, that's going to require better? a little bit of. That's a damn good question. Yeah, that's a damn good question. And Spencer, do me a favor. Watch on Wednesday. I'm going to dig into back in 
2008, 9, and 10 and take a look at specifically, and I'll, I'll, I'll have an answer for it. To wing it would be a little Shoot different. Shoot from the hip. Yeah. I, 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 you know what? I think that's a yes and maybe no yes, right? I think at certain price points, it did well. I can tell you Lake Monticello had a lot of uh, short sales, a lot of foreclosures in it. I don't, I don't remember seeing a lot out in the counties. You know, maybe they did a little bit better. You know, your water and sewer, you don't have to pay for it, right? It's so that it was helpful in payments. And you don't have an HOA, so all of a sudden the HOA is struggling because of a downturn. Says, you know what, your dues now is instead of a dollar is $10, right? So you don't have that. You do have tax increases and insurance increases. So it's kind of, it's a great, freaking great question. It's a great question. I, I just... I need to ponder it and dig into some data so I can answer it clearly. And to the I love point. it. I love it. So Carsbrook. Spencer, thank you. Um, your take on Carsbrook. People are asking for that. Carsbrook, I'll have to, I'd, have to, I'd have to look up. I don't... I love people are just pitching you neighborhoods. This yeah, is awesome. I, I, I personally, I think I've only sold one or two in the years out in Carsbrook, so I'd have to do a little, a little data, a data search on that. Travis is watching in Danville. Hey, Travis, I'm it's, still trying to get to see you, brother. It says, it seems that the long-term life of new communities without amenities and some mixed use is not as long as those that do have it. PPEAs will become more and more important to help uh -huh. solve the housing crisis uh -huh. and to provide these amenities. Oh. You want, to, you want to touch on that? No, I love PPE. PPEAs. You want to let us know what those are? So, it's a, so technically, the acronym reads Public Private E is supposed to stand for Education Act. But what it really is, is when jurisdictions, at the public and the private sector get together to do a project. The E at one point stood for education. I think at the point when it was created, it was kind of more of an education focused thing, but is now morphed into it. Um, and that is a, that is a life, that is a business, that is, that, that is a, an entity all unto itself. Um, uh, boy, these questions we're oh getting are like, they're like, I'm writing down High level, I know. So PPEA is, I mean, we talk about this all the time. We try to have the conversations about this topic and keep it engaging. And so, but a PPEA is so detailed. Catherine Locker wants to know what that acronym means. Pi Private Public Education Act is what it stands for. Um, and uh, Travis can chime in and, and fill in uh, what you know if I've got that wrong. Um, uh, but they, it's it's when the public bodies like Danville uh -huh. gets together with the with the with the private entities and they make some magic happen. Um, multiple people are telling I'm on Carsbrook, us. Carsbrook, by the way, if you whenever you want to talk. Um, about let's that. do Carsbrook here in a second. Multiple people are saying the restaurant you're looking for is Auto Auto Turkish Street. Thank you, food. thank you, thank you. Auto Turkish Street Food on the corner of Market and Second. We wondered why that location, despite having quality tenants, turnovers constantly. And that the food is excellent. The food is excellent. I, I, I couldn't remember it, but but Yon and I. Uh, eaten and has have eaten there multiple times. Um, Carsbrook, Keith Smith. Yeah, one active, uh, five seventy five. Been on the market for eighty nine days. I Carsbrook is behind Coors Brothers, twenty nine North. Is that's that right? Exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one pending in the six forty five range, and then there are nine that have sold in the last twelve months. Uh, the median sales price over there is five fifty seven in this last 12 month, 12 month um, window with an, a median days on market of uh, 17. Oh, that's Woodbrook. Oh, that's Woodbrook, you're right, I apologize. Thank you, thank you, um, multiple viewers on this, that's Woodbrook. It was a test, we were yeah, testing. So we were test. Thank you. It was a test for us. <laughs> There's a little thing with an M called map. I can click on it and find out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so, so there's, um, I, I, like I said, I, I can't remember the last time we actually sold something over there. I think where you Woodbrook and Carsbrook, they're kind of close to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think um, I Carsbrook believe kind of comes up on the Ravana River, if I remember correctly. The uh, friend of the program, um, Ray Cadell, lives in one of those subdivisions, I believe. You know and, what? And y Yancey knows his stuff. He says Carsbrook is across from Malloy. Woodbrook is behind Coors Brothers. 
Dude, you can't get anything by the viewers and listeners on this fine and fair time. We're going to get an ice cream and a car. <laughs> yeah, you cannot get anything by. And this, again, shows us that this literally is a live talk show. Neil Williamson, welcome to the program. Hey, Neil. How's it going, buddy? Give Neil some props. Congratulations, Neil. He got a, he's got a new family member. Oh, he's got a, he got a dog. He got a puppy. I, I love seeing that photo on your yeah, page. Your Neil life Williamson. is just about ready to change again, Neil my Williamson, friend. now the proud owner. He and his wife, the proud owner of a puppy. Mrs. Smith is thinking about a second one, by the way. You really? Yeah. Forrest is going to get a brother or a sister? Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you think about this comment? I think a sister. But there is, a, there is an intrinsic value that exists from being in a well-developed subdivision. Agreed. We've seen builders build inside of it, build inside of subdivisions, um, and then build the same model outside of the subdivision, and there is certainly a difference. The dirt costs more to be in a subdivision but I would have to say that consumers are willing to pay more to be inside of that community. You know, that's from Woody. Woody yeah, lives at the yeah, lake, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was just literally thinking as you were speaking. I wonder what Woody thinks about this. And there you go. Uh, look, so so from a, I, from not a, to speak for my wife, she would feel the same way. Yeah, but but I can I can tell you one of the hardest things to find right now is something on two acres with no covenants and restrictions. There are there is buyer profiles. Maybe that's a wrong choice of words. I'm not supposed to use that word. There are buyers out there. There you go, Smith. Just erase that whole last statement. We can do that, right? Shouldn't yeah, we can do it. Can do totally. It. I think he just it. did it. It's race. Look yeah. at that. I've yeah. never said that word. Oh, you never said uh, that. The, the, you know, there are buyers that call us and say, look, I'm looking for, I'm picking a number, half a million bucks, two acres, well and septic. I don't want to be beholden. To a covenant, you're talking just the dirt. No, no, a house. A house what if that house doesn't exist. Yeah, okay, 750, whatever, okay. whatever the number is. Okay, but there are buyers out there that want to buy and live someplace where they don't have covers and restrictions. They can, you know, they can put their RV on there and not get yelled at. They where can is sing. someone getting two acres in Elmore County for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars with a house? Yeah, like I said, forget about the okay, number. Okay, all right, I was gonna say. <laughs> Forget about, I, forget about the number. I can see someone spending... I was spending trying a, to make a point, Miller. A million, a million and a half, a million seven five for two acres with a house and no covenants and restrictions. I was trying to make a point, Miller, and you went ahead and... What would the hotbeds be? And another folk, more folks are asking about neighborhoods. You know one that we should highlight is Turkey Run. So... Um, Southern Almore County, you know Turkey Run? I do. I'm trying to find... What's available in Altmar County with two acres? Oh, please! And up, uh, um, I do need to customize this a little bit, folks, because I want to take out HOA. So I'm going to. This is this is where he instructs Jerry to talk, That's why. and this is where I'm uh, <laughs> I'm killing time. Real talk with Keith Smith. Yeah, I think I'm doing Keller okay with my ADD doing, doing, today, dude. You're crushing I, I, I the show. I, you're doing think, a damn good job. I think I'm job. doing good. I think I'm doing good. Um, I'm, uh, you know, this is uh, the therapist said. You know, this is what I should do on the show. So. Um, Catherine Lochner says that exists in the Bedford Hills subdivision. Two acres, low HOA, no covenants and restrictions. Catherine Lochner, the, Catherine, are you a retired teacher? I know you've, you mentioned you've been here <coughs> since 2010, but are you a retired teacher now, Catherine? She said, look at the Bedford Hills subdivision, two acres, low HOA, no covenants and restrictions. It exists. So, uh, I, it does, but I don't see any of it... Um any of it on the market. So let me just, before I open up my mouth, let me make sure that I don't make a mistake here. Um, we have more neighborhood um, analyses being requested of you, including yes, ben, uh, Benavar and Dunlora. Got it. Well, let's stay on the two-acre thing right now. So um, interesting. So what I did is I just told the system I'm looking for a minimum of two acres. Maximum is unlimited. Unlimited price, right? We're not saying a certain price range, but I did tell it um, no HOA. So right now, there's 57 properties available that meet those criteria. Rather narrow, right? Right. No HOA, minimum two acres, available for sale in in Albemarle County, and they range from a minimum of 250 or start price to 15 million. All right. So I mean, we can go back in and maybe change. Put like four Where's acres. the 15 million? Uh, you'd ask me that. 15 million in Almoral County? 
Yep, Elmore County. Uh, 1510 Echo Hill Farm. 15, what is the address? 1510 Echo Hill Farm. 1510, oh, got it. Showed up on Google search here. I'm going to look at this bad boy. Yeah, so um, the point is, is there oh, are... spectacular. There are 57 homes done. So l let's, you know, we, we can put a price range in there. What, what, do, you, what do you think... What do you think the average buyer would want to buy a home for at two acres, no HOA? What do you half a million to with a house to, on it? Yeah, so, in Almoro County. So let's just see. Let's just see what's available. I mean, that's what uh, that's that, got to be six this, to nine hundred k, right? Are we what? doing a show? This right is now? great. Yeah, we are, and we're the viewers are loving it. So I'm going to do just for the heck of it. Um, I'm going to put in this. I'm going to put a minimum of five hundred and two. Oh God, not not seventy five million. <laughs> To seven hundred and fifty thousand, uh, there's eight homes. To your point, so there's eight homes with minimum of two acres, no HOA, in Albemarle County, ranging between five hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And the DOMs on those? I'm working on it. Uh, Seventeen days. Okay. That's active. We're not looking at pending. We're not looking at souls or or anything like that uh, on that end of it. And so. Typically, when you take out the HOA, they drop. There's no subdivisions, but there happens to be um, Milton Hills yeah. subdivision. Milton and Hills is in the Keswick area. You take a right at the, uh, that's well, that's Milton Village, where you're taking a right at the Clifton and Stone Robinson. So this is Milton Hills. Where's Milton Hills? Um, I will tell is you. Is that in Milton in Keswick? I don't know the answer to that, sir, but I'm going to find out because there's a little thing called M for a map. Yeah, I can figure out. Google Map is. is a beautiful thing. No, no, in my Paragon, I don't have to go go out that far. Yeah, it's it's by Milton in in Ashmere. It's off of Milton Road. Okay, that's a great spot. Yeah, Keswick area Milton. by Cl the Clifton and Stone Robinson. Yeah, so so or by uh, Eagle Mountain Baptist Church. Beautiful back there. Yeah, so that's been on the market. Zero just came on today. Uh, $500,000, that's probably not going to last very long. No. Uh, 3,200 square feet. Let me see what we got here. Three, three bedrooms, three, three and a half baths on 3.9 acres, no HOA. Uh, Multiple folks are saying you need to do a talk show on um, individual neighborhoods. Yeah, sure. We've talked about that yeah. once or twice before, and the executive producer's been gallivanting, and he hasn't. Been, <laughs> he hasn't the man is a very well traveled individual, yeah, well, Keith Smith. And he's talking, earned it. You've earned it. I was talking to Yona this morning. Uh, Wednesday was like, I didn't do a show for three weeks. Wednesday was my first show last Wednesday. This is my first full week. I'm excited. Um, oh, look at that. 1120. No, plenty of time. Okay. I'm enjoying this very much. The subdivision versus the standalone. Yeah, so it depends on the buyer, right? On it, I think. I think Woody's analogy is right. I think if you were to, when I crunch a bunch of numbers between now and Wednesday, I think at the end of the day, you'll see subdivisions will perform a little bit better than out in in the country. Certainly in COVID. Well, that's interesting because you know I'm you know where do I go? How far back do I go? Right? You should do it. You should do the snapshot 2019 versus. Uh, so you uh, get a little of uh, the non-COVID. So what I'm going to do is this year, last year, 2019 and 18. It's, it's once I set up the program, changing the dates become easy, and and just take a bunch of notes to go ahead and do it. You um, brought ammunition today. I did. I got all kinds of stuff. We didn't even dig too much into. Uh, the rest of the actives in the city, but I, uh, I'm going to be tracking that. I, I, the fact that there's quite a few over 60s in there, there's, a lot, there's more single digits, but I don't remember seeing a lot of 60s and 70s in, in the city for quite a while, so we're going to dig a little bit into that. Your closing thoughts for the viewers and listeners on, the, um, the, on housing now? I think it's, you know... Now's the time to buy. It, we've been saying that forever. Now, if you're ready to buy, now's the time to buy. If you're ready to sell, now's the time to sell. And that's always the case, right? Uh, you know, but the market, at the moment, you know, we're somewhat resilient, you know. Uh, the inflation's kind of up there. I don't care what anybody says, we're in a recession. 
technically maybe we're not, but we're in a recession. And, um, but homes are still being sold, right? You know, le over the last 60 days, we had uh, 106 sold last week and then 110. So, it, uh, you know, so we're doing, we're doing pretty close on that end of it. Sorry about that. My no problem. Hearing aids were ringing there. You, uh, I didn't shut the phone off. Catherine, um, Catherine wants us to do a show on how is housing affecting um, overcrowding in Charlottesville City Schools? That's a lot of layers to unpack on man, that. Man, man, that's that's a that's a tough one to because that's a that is a yin and yang thing, right? Because if you don't have enough houses, you're not pulling in enough revenue to pay the teachers. And if you don't have enough of that, you know, it's just that's a that's, that's a, a tough one, man. I, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure I'm qualified to talk about that. <laughs> great, great. Vanessa detail. Parkhill, who is the queen of Earliesville. So we can bring in. I'm, I'm, I'll make a note of that, and you know, we'll bring in experts in the education field that can help us with. That's that. a great one. That's a good one. Uh, Vanessa Parkhill's watching in Earliesville. She's the queen of Earliesville. Some of the lots, she says, in Earliesville Forest are probably over two acres, Keith. Yeah. I'd bet all are over one acre, mostly wooded, very private, low HOA, lots of trails. Back in the 1990s, these homes rarely sat on the market more than a week or two. Um, yeah, so, so Vanessa, thank you. But I narrowed the search so low that it was only no HOA. So anything that had an HOA in it was did not, not make your criteria. Did not make the criteria. Um, Kevin taught me something today. Milton... Once you pass the White House on the corner in Milton, on the left, technically Milton Airport, you know who owns hundreds of acres back there? The University of Virginia. Oh, yes, because there used to be an airport there, right? Is there? I think there's still... Kevin, is there... Is I, it st I drive that road. That road is beautiful. Like every day. There's a... Um, Milton Airport. So we got Clifton. We crossed the river. They, somebody renovated that old farmhouse... There's a beautiful little... Um, there's a shooting range down there. There's a, there's a beautiful little like deli, sandwich shop, um, convenience store. Yeah, that's off of 53. That's off, it used to be the old Simeon Market. Yeah, that's off of 53. That's, two, that's really two different locations. I mean, you go right around the corner. A little, it's four, yeah. two or three miles around the corner. Two or three miles, yeah. Country around the corner. The airport was formerly the Milton Field. Exactly right. It was part of UVA. Part of UVA now. Right. Um, is the Milton Airport still open? I, I can, well, I've been driving that road for, since 1987. I've never seen a plane land there. Oh, Grayson says this. Milton Field is a former airfo airfield located along the Rivanna River east of Charlottesville. The property was purchased by the University of Virginia in the 1930s and was an operational airfield from the 40s until the early 1970s. Yeah, he go. says the University of Virginia has repurposed the property for a variety of academic and administrative uses, and the Rivanna Radio Control Club also yeah. uses the property for model aircraft uh, flights. That, yeah, that I can verify. I've seen the model planes fly around there. And then Albemarle. Dude, I just learned something. Right next to it, Albemarle County just built an indoor shooting range um i literally kevin and grayson and Catherine, you guys got us going today on a great topic history of of the milton area would be a great show topic and travis says keith you should do a show on ppeas and how those benefit communities that engage them <coughs> you got a lot of pressure right now i just that made me joke you got a lot of look pressure at, look at that thank you travis <laughs> You guys are the best. We you just, love you, viewers. Travis, you just shut me. I, I think that's the first time somebody <laughs> shut me that's off. That's a great topic. It's a great topic. But, Travis, how do you make that? I, I would get so in the weeds on that You're so fast. approachable and digestible. Yeah, approachable and digestible. For a talk that's, show. That's, 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 that's the, the challenge. That's the trick yeah. to this, to, to go ahead and, and figure out a way to do that <clears throat> in, a, in an approachable way. Because I, I, I love them. You would so, love it. Well, I love that product that, that, that so much. I'd go in the weeds so fast that, you know, <clears throat> I'd be getting texts from Miller. <laughs> Get out of the weeds. I thought Smith. you did a great job today. Yeah. Other than, other than uh, 
um, um, <laughs> the last question making me cough here. You did a great job. Keith Smith, the, all the shows are archived yeah. online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Check out the website, realtalkwithkeefsmith.com. Who made that website? It's a great website. That's we, a great made, we made that website. <laughs> um, but what is awesome on that website is the Partners tab. Yes. Please pull down the Partners tab. Please go ahead and, and, and support these folks. They're in the chain of command, if for, for using old Marine Corps terminology. And actually, one of our great sponsors, Segura, is going to be coming in on Friday. Friday to talk about some neat stuff that they're going to be releasing. And I want to kind of dig into, uh, hey, we're, we're actually getting ready to put it in our house. We're kind of going to use our house as a data, as a beta test on how the process works and so forth and so on. And uh, you know what? Inflation going up, if there's a way that this can put on it and cut your electrical bill, which is what, uh, what we're going to talk about. Um, Any dollar counts. Every dollar counts. You crushed it today. Thank you. I had a great time. I, I, uh, I, I spent a couple hours prepping yesterday, and I, hopefully it showed. It showed. It showed. Um, you, Judah Wickower, job well done as well. He's our director, Judah Wickower. Um, Did Liza do good today? I thought Liza no always way, is No good. tail wagon or nothing? Of the, of the four mammals in the room, Liza the dog performs at the highest level and at the most consistent <coughs> clip every day. Well, she got special treats today. I now, thought. granted, the extent of what Liza has to do from a performance standpoint is eat treats from Keith and wiggle her butt so people love her. And she's very good at doing that. I would say she does that well. There she is. <laughs> on, on command. Can you show Liza to the viewers and listeners somehow, Judah? I know this is putting you on the on the fly here. If it's very difficult, no problem. Oh, you're making it happen. You got the studio camera. Liza, are you still over there? Are you gonna? Sh you can climb over there and show them how you spoil her. It would make great content. Great content. Okay. Yeah. Are Are you showing it? Oh wow, you are actually showing it. This is live programming at its finest here on the I Love Seville Network. This is gen this is what Keith does three times a week. He gives Liza the rescue dog somewhere between 15 and 20 treats no, per day. No, you're exaggerating. No, that I am not exaggerating. You're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. He, people, and as folks? a result, I think Liza would leave with Keith. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> he already knows. You. Totally. God. Totally. 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 And he says it just straightforwardly. <laughs> she would leave with me. <laughs> That's the owner right there, Judah. Does he that made... matter to me? <laughs> 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 oh, I love the show. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday. Yeah, yeah Wednesday is going to be fun. Scott will be with us. Uh, we'll kind of pick up some of the stuff from today. Uh, and I'm excited about Friday. Uh, you know, Tad Terrell is a, is a lot of fun. Oh, he's the best. We're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a great time. And uh, the most Jack guy in solar. Yeah, there's something wrong with that dude. Man. Is Diesel? <laughs> he's a brick house. <laughs> Literally, he's a brick house. Dad Latrell from Segura, front of the program on Friday, Wednesday. Scott I'm smart Morris. enough just to call him sir. Yes, ah, sir. No, sir. Whatever you need, Dad. <laughs> whatever you need. Our house is your house, Dad. That's right. Just don't, whatever you need. That's right. Don't put me in your bicep, Dad. Normally, I was trying to negotiate a better deal for the solar, but I kind of gave up on that. You break your kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> Judah, Keith, Jerry, Real Talk with Keith Smith, online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. I love Siebel Show in 58 minutes. Have a great Monday, everybody. Have a great Monday. Take care, everyone. Take care. Keith, that was excellent. That was fun.